So when I was a kid and was growing up, I didn't realize that the reason my mom made pretty much everything from scratch, occasionally we would get like as a treat, she would buy cold cereal, and every now and then, I remember she would buy vanilla wafers because those were one of my dad's favorite cookies, but he actually really loved banana pudding. But I did not have like store-bought cookies or store-bought foods. In fact, the first time I ever had Oreos, I was a teenager in high school and I was staying the night at a friend's house. And she's like, we gotta have Oreos tonight. Like, I'm so excited, they're my favorite cookie. And I'm like, what do they taste like? I never had Oreos before. And I remember like she was super excited about them and so we had Oreos with milk, you know, dunking them in there. And I remember thinking like, well, they're okay, but I don't really get why she's so excited about these. I didn't think that they were anything great and to this day I could really care less if I ever had an Oreo cookie again or not. But that was because I was used to homemade chocolate chip cookies or peanut butter cookies if my older brother was coming home because those were his favorite. And so I knew as soon as I came in the house, if my mom was baking peanut butter cookies, I knew that my older brother was coming home for a visit or was coming up. Um, but store-bought foods like that were just not really a regular part of our food and diet. And so what was really interesting is we had to have the basics stocked and we had to know how to use them. And we lived quite rurally. I still live rurally. I actually live on the same road that I grew up on just one house over. I've lived on the same road my entire life, believe it or not. But the reason I share that is because we couldn't just run to the store if you were out of an ingredient or if you needed something or if you wanted something. One, because it took a while to get there, but two, there was the cost of gas. And depending on what it was that you needed, you may have to drive an hour if the smaller local grocery store uh, didn't stock it. But we also, when I was growing up, didn't really have the money for extra ingredients. And so my mom bought the basic ingredients and learned how to use those. So we didn't have convenience mixes and packages. And when I got older and started my own household, which you can watch some of those videos where um, I've talked more about that in my health journey, I used some of those convenience items and I didn't realize the impact they were having on my health until I had to have my upper stomach and esophagus biopsied for cancer. And then I completely changed the way that we stocked things and the way that we did things. And right now at this time, you've seen a lot of things at the time of this recording about um, supply issues and other countries telling their citizens to stock up on things for the winter and that type of a thing. And what I realized is we, I've had the blessing of having things on hand and being stocked up because of where we lived and the necessity um, from a frugal standpoint for myself and my family as an adult from a health standpoint and also not being able to just get certain things um, if I wanted them without driving a ways or even having to order them. There's some items that I don't actually aren't stocked even at, at local stores as I started getting into more of wanting pure whole food type ingredients. But we just came through, in fact, this morning we just got power. We had major flooding here and cut off our access points, um, the ends of our roads, there were no power for days. And in fact, our entire county was pretty much without power. So that meant even if you could get out, which we couldn't because part of our roads, during part of the time, our roads were flooded and so we couldn't get out, we were kind of landlocked. Um, but even if you could, the stores didn't have power and so the majority of them weren't open and you couldn't buy anything even if you needed to get it. So regardless of what's going on in the world state right now, just from being um, prepared and not like prepper, I think the world is going to end or hit the fan type situation, but just being prepared for things that happen in life like floods or snowstorms or windstorms, power outages, etc., is great. And that also learning how to cook from these items. I remember back when I wanted, if I wanted to bake a cake or if we wanted to have tacos, if I didn't have a cake mix or if I didn't have one of those little, you know, packages of taco seasoning mix, then I'm like, oh, well, we can't have that because I didn't know how to make those things from scratch and I didn't keep individual ingredients stocked and it is much cheaper and healthier because you don't have all of the additives that it comes in a lot of those packets if you just stock the individual ingredients. So we're kind of just talking about basic kitchen stocking and putting together basic meals from things that if you're a homesteader and you have a garden and you're raising livestock, how to take meat and vegetables and those things and 
create meals and also how to stretch those items. So for, for example, having chili powder. Now, I don't like spicy, so you will notice that mine says mild. So I have mild chili powder because I don't like hot. And when you're buying it in bulk, I highly recommend that you pay attention to if it says mild or not. Um, I will never forget when I ordered a bunch of chili powder organic and I bought it, I think I had bought like a pound and I didn't pay attention when I was checking out on the online cart. I thought that I had picked mild. No, 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 no. I had picked ground dried bird's eye chili powder, which had a school rating on it of quite hot. And the best part is I didn't pay attention when I was checking out, nor did I pay attention once I got the package. I just saw, oh, it says chili powder. That's what I ordered. And so I made a pot of chili and I used the normal amount that I would use of mild organic chili powder. Oh my gosh, the first bite, it was so hot. I was running for milk, water, like you name it. I tried adding, uh, one of the tricks is if you've made it a little bit spicy that you can add, at least in our household, like you'd add sour cream or you can even add ranch, um, something like that that's going to help dilute it and make it creamier. Um, no, even a whole bottle of ranch was not going to make that palatable. It was so spicy. And even my husband who loves spicy food, like he will get jars, uh, cans of just canned jalapenos and just eat jalapenos straight, just like as a snack. Like I would a pickle, but never, never a jalapeno. Even it was too spicy for him. So just pay attention and make sure that you get the right, um, heat level when you get it. But if you've got your chili powder, um, I get mine from Azure Standard. Now I get a lot of my supplies, they have organic mixes, which is important to me on a lot of my spices. They don't have a lot of additives. You can buy them in bulk, great prices. If you're not familiar with Azure Standard, I will put a link um, and you can go and check them out and see how their system works. They are now uh, shipping and have drop-off points in all of the US. So really great company. I've been very happy. I've been ordering from them for about two years two or three years now, um, kind of starting, I think it was about in March of 2020 when I started ordering for them. But if you've got your chili powder on hand, which I need to refill my jar, I have it in bulk that I keep in the back pantry and then I just fill up my jars of the spices that I keep in the cupboard where I'm cooking. Um, then obviously you can make chili, you can make your own taco seasoning mix, um, you can do like Mexican rice. There's so many things that you can, um, I like to put a little bit of chili powder, just a small amount, not to make it spicy, but it just adds flavor when I'm making different stews, um, all those sorts of things. And you don't have to worry about just having one of those little packets. Um, same thing with the cumin. Obviously cumin is gonna help you make your taco seasoning, but then I can also use that in, in different dishes. If I'm doing like up, if I've got rice to stretch a meal, add a little bit of salsa and I can add some of this with a little bit of leftover meat um, and make like rice taco bowls, which is really easy to do. Or if I've got some uh, cooked dried beans, I can add them in. And of course, salt. <laughs> so salt, is really important. I buy my salt usually in 10 or 25 pound uh, buckets. Um, I like to use Redmond's Real Salt because then I only have to get one thing of salt. I can use this for my canning. I can use it for my fermenting. Um, it doesn't have any additives in it, so it's fine to use as a canning salt, but then I just use it as my regular cooking salt. And then I don't have to have different kinds of salt, but it's got all of the uh, minerals in there. It's an unrefined mineral salt. So I've got all the minerals and nutrients in there that our bodies need, which you don't get if you're just buying, you know, the ta white table salt that a lot of us are used to, or probably a lot of you had growing up. I did. We didn't have sea salt or salt like this. Um, but this is the only salt that I pretty much uh, stock now because I can get it in bulk. And just salt itself, right, really makes a difference in your cooking. If you've ever cooked anything without any salt at all and you taste it and then you just add a little bit of salt, it just makes all the difference to the flavor of the finished meal. Then of course, garlic powder, onion powder. Um, these I need to restock my containers that I keep in the pan, or excuse me, in the cupboard from my pantry back stock. Um, but if you have all of these, you can make up a lot of different mixes and flavorings. And then if I do run short on having fresh onions, we grow a year's worth of garlic and onions, but this last year, my onion crop we had really weird weather this last year. We had 120 degrees Fahrenheit weekends here in the Pacific Northwest, and that has never been recorded here before ever. And my garlic did fine. 
my onion crops did not do so well. So what's great is, and maybe you aren't in a spot where you can grow a year's worth of those things yet, but I can take a small amount of onion powder and use that in place of fresh onions if I need to for flavoring. But I also make all up of my own um, homemade taco seasoning mix, like Italian dressing mix. In fact, I've got a, a blog post that has a whole bunch of homemade spice and different dressing mixes and spice mixes that you can go and grab. There's free printable tags that you can get um, and put those on. So highly recommend that you grab those. Then some other things is that I like to make sure that I have on hand is you don't need to buy popcorn seasoning. Now I love keeping I actually just buy this in bulk now and I just keep this shaker and just keep refilling it because it has the, the handy little, you know, where you can pop it open on this side and it's got the little sprinkle area and then you can put your spoon in on this side if you need to do larger amounts. But I, we love popcorn. So usually once a week, I make up a big thing of popcorn, smother it with melted butter because everything tastes better with butter and we do real fats here. And then I like to sprinkle on a little bit of the nutritional yeast and dill. So this is just dried dill from our garden. I just keep this in here and just take a little bit of dill and put that on and then a smidgen of the garlic powder and it is just like having ranch flavored popcorn. It is so, 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 so good. The other thing for stretching and not having to buy a lot of this stuff, pre-made things from the store and just giving you the freedom to have things on hand and turn it into a lots of different meals and foods for your family, um, is never buying like the gravy packet mix or cans of condensed anything. I haven't bought a can of condensed any type of soup in years, probably over 10 years. So if you have got on hand um, a little bit of cornstarch, now you can also use flour, kind of kind of depends where you are. Um, those are the thickeners. We don't have any uh, grain sensitivities or gluten sensitivities issues within our family. So I will keep um, flour on hand and or cornstarch in order to thicken up and make my own uh, gravy. So I'll use a little bit of cornstarch with water there, especially on nights where I have roasted, um, obviously a whole bird or something like that to make the gravy, um, turkey, ham, beef, whatever it is, your roast that you'd wanna make that, um, use this as my thickener. But all of the condensed cream soups, if you just have a little bit of a fat source, so it can be lard, it can be butter, it can be coconut oil, those tend to be the, the natural fats that we use here on our homestead, melt those, add a little bit of flour, and then your broth. So bone broth, we make and can up broth. I've got video you can watch on how to make that as well as how to can it so that you've got it as it's shelf stable. I actually also have a recipe on showing you step-by-step -step how to make the homemade condensed uh, cream of soups and you can do mushrooms and chicken and celery and all of those that you would buy from the store. You don't ever need to buy those. You can make them in less than, it. I've timed it, exactly four minutes from start to finish. You can have the equivalent of a can of condensed whatever cream soup um, just by whipping it together for a few ingredients. And it works great in freezing, slow cooker, instant pot, oven, all the ways. So you can grab that resource. But having your broth on hand is a great way to stretch and make a lot of meals. So you can make the gravies, you can make your roux, you can make your sauces. And a lot of those recipes, when you see them, they will call for using dairy or almost all milk. Well, we don't have a dairy animal. So I buy all of my milk and I, try to only purchase grass-fed, organic, vat pasteurized, meaning it's not ultra high heat pasteurized, it's a lower heat pasteurization, so it retains more of the good parts of it, milk. But that means that I'm having to drive to a one, the, one of the only stores that actually carries that from a local dairy um, that I can get to. I'm driving about 45 minutes one way, so I, and I do pay more for it, which I'm fine with doing because I want to support agriculture and farmers who are using practices that are better for the animal and for our own health. So that aside, I have to drive and I also have to pay for my dairy. And so I have found that obviously my bone broth, once I've got it canned, is shelf stable, that you can stretch and also using broth that adds flavor, it adds collagen and gelatin, which are all really great building blocks for our health, especially gut health. And it also has protein in there, so you have the flavor, but you also are getting some extra protein in there. But I, you can substitute almost all broth in a lot of the recipes and just add a little bit of milk, so that keeps your budget down, um, and it also increases the nutritional level for a lot of reasons. And using a really good homemade bone broth, it adds a lot more flavor, it adds a lot of flavor depth. So I will use um, 
bone broth and use a lot of that when I'm making my condensed cream of soup so then I'm just using a little bit of dairy. I like to do a um, Thai uh, coconut Thai dish with chicken that my kids love and the other night I usually will have some of the cans of coconut cream that I keep on hand just for a few of the curry and different recipes like that that we use and I realized that I was out. I didn't have any, but I had already started the recipe and was just getting ready to blend up the sauce to pour over the chicken to let that cook. And I'm like, oh man, I, I don't have any, I don't have any coconut cream. So I decided, I'm like, well, I'm just gonna sub in a jar of my broth and then I'm just gonna add in some regular, I had a small amount of whole, um, whole cream. Well, I would hope cream is whole, <laughs> made from whole milk. Anyways, a full cream um, at the end of it in place of using the coconut cream, they didn't even know a difference. It's one of their favorite dishes ever, and they couldn't tell that I hadn't used any coconut cream. So now I'm like, yes, like I actually don't need to stock that coconut cream anymore. It was pretty much that was one of the only dishes, there was just two dishes that I actually used that in. And now that I know that I can sub that in with just the bone broth and using some cream that I happen to have on hand, and we couldn't tell a difference, that's just one less item that I actually have to stock because I can make the bone broth um, from all ingredients that we raise here on the farm, from either the beef or the chickens, obviously, and then some of the veggies. Um, other things too, though, is when you're raising a lot of your own food and learning to cook and create meals, is sometimes people get overwhelmed with knowing how to prepare a lot of these things, especially if you grew up without um, cooking or you grew up cooking with convenience items or you've cooked with convenience items for a long time is preparing meals from these basic basic ingredients. And it can get overwhelming too when you are cooking from scratch because you are cooking pretty much every single meal. You're doing all of the prep and you have all of the cleanup and most people wanna eat three times a day, right? Especially if you have kids and they wanna eat more than three times a day. So some of the things that I like to do, and this also can help stretch that budget and create other meals is on a Sunday, typically Sundays we go to church and then we're home. We try not to plan a lot for Sunday afternoons. So I like to do a lot of my meal prep for the week on Sunday afternoon. So I will do up the majority of my baking. I'll get any dough started for bread, for the uh, five minute artisan bread. So I have that dough on hand. You can catch that video. We'll have a link to it where you just make up a large amount of dough and then it stays in the fridge for up to 14 weeks for you to be able to pull the dough out and make different items from. Um, I'll do that. And then I like to cook a large whole type of something meat. So we'll do a whole chicken. I'll do a ham. This past week we did a roast. And then that way, that night when I have more time to actually create sides and whatnot, then we'll eat it in its whole form. So we'll have roast chicken with usually you know broccoli, um, maybe mashed potatoes, garlic bread, homemade rolls, wh whatever, biscuits, kind of just varies. But we'll eat that just like you would picture just having kind of like the, a large Sunday dinner of, of old. And then the next night, I've got already prepared meat and I usually have some leftover vegetables. So learning how to take a smaller amount of meat and vegetables and then create that into different meals is really gonna help stretch your budget and it's also gonna help stretch so that you don't feel like you're just eating or your kids don't feel like they're eating the same thing for leftovers every single night. So if I've got a small amount of protein uh, in the meat that's already cooked and some vegetables or if I'm pulling canned vegetables to add to it and some broth, I can create a plethora of things. Um, I'm actually gonna create a chart for you guys where you can look and we'll have listed out um, different meals that you can make with those things so that you kind of have it already done for you variety wise. So make sure that you go and visit the blog post to grab that. But you can just take that and usually what I like to do is the second night we'll do a couple of things. Um, I'll use, make a soup, right? You can make different cream soups because adding that broth and adding you know different odd and end vegetables really allows you to stretch that and it feels like it's a new meal, it's not eating the same thing. Um, I like to do different rice bowls, so we'll add more vegetables and, and some different sauces. You can just swap that out for sauces. You can do something like a rice bowl or we'll do like a, a bun and I'll take the leftover meat and maybe put like a little bit of teriyaki sauce on it if we're gonna do a little bit more Asian inspired, um, whip up some barbecue sauce and put it on that if we wanna do more like a, a pulled version of it. Um, and then I'll make up some buns or we'll do 
you know, that type of uh, like little sliders or that type of a thing that makes it feel like, you know, a different meal, but I'm not having to cook something else and it's helping to stretch it. One of our favorite things is to do pot pies. Um, I'll do the version with pie crust or where I'll put it in a casserole dish and then I'll make up biscuits really quick and just put the biscuits on top. So it's kind of like a biscuit pot pie or a biscuit casserole. Um, so those are some of the other ways that we'll change it. And just by the vegetables that you add in and the seasonings and whatever the, the protein is, of course, ham's gonna taste different than chicken, etc. cetera. Um, then oftentimes I'll do, especially if it's chicken, we'll do some type of like curry inspired um, dish where I'll just add in that. So if you've just got a basic array of spices and the, just a basic meat and vegetable, then you're really able to create a lot of different meals. And for our family of four, of course, it's gonna depend on your family size and the age of your kids. You know, if you've got six kids and, and you know, two adults, then one chicken may not feed you or stretch as far as it's going to us, where I've got two kids and then my husband and I, so we've got four people, but for us, our chickens usually average between five and six pounds dressed out. We raise and butcher our own chickens here. So if I'm cooking a, you know, five and a half pound, let's meet in the middle chicken, we'll have that, we'll eat that just as a roasted chicken Sunday night. And then the next night, I'll usually turn that into some type of casserole or maybe like a, a taco um, where I'll take it and just uh, dress it in a little bit of spices, um, add some curtido, which is some of our fermented, it's a fermented Spanish sauerkraut, whatnot, um, and we'll have that for one night. Or I'll do um, pupusas, which is where you take ground beef, add a little bit of taco seasoning. You can also stretch that with a little bit of cheese. You can do it with dried beans where you've cooked them. And then you just make a really simple dough out of water and masa flour or corn flour. Um, and you will take it, it's kind of like um, a reverse taco is what my kids call it. But you'll take a little ball of the dough and you flatten it out, you just go like this between your hands, flatten it out, and then you just put like a tablespoon or so of the filling inside, and then you bring up the dough and you pinch it around it so that your filling is completely encased by this dough, and then you flatten it back out again, and then you just quickly pan fry it. The stuffing is already all filled. Uh, it is phenomenal. It's an El Salvadorian dish. Um, that's one of our favorites, but just having that, like, again, it's just like having some basic flour on hand and water, and then you've got your your meat and a little bit of vegetable if it's the bean in there and then on top we're doing salsa that I canned up during the, the from the summer months on top of that with some of the curtido so we've got some ferment in there maybe some cultured buttermilk or homemade cultured sour cream on top um, is like a dressing on top but it's just easy ways to make those things stretch and then the next night I'll probably usually like the last night or two um, I'll take all of the little bits that are left over and because it's it's roasting like I said a whole chicken that's got the bone in there right it's a ham that has the bone in there um, pot roast it's got the bone in there I'm saving those bones and then I'll be and then I'll make broth and then I've got the extra broth and then we'll do up like a soup or a stew and so I can usually get at least three full dinners out of that one whole chicken. And oftentimes if I've made the soup and or stew or the casserole or the things for the tacos or the pupusas, or sometimes it's a rice bowl or curry or whatnot, then we're gonna have that for two nights. We'll have leftovers of that. So generally I can take a whole chicken and that whole chicken will feed us for dinner anyways, um, a minimum of four nights, sometimes five, but I, you have to have those skill sets and you have to have the ingredients on hand in order to turn those into those different meals. But once you begin stocking these and realizing that you don't have to have those little packets and just kind of getting um, you know, creative of swapping different ingredients out and finding out what your, your family likes, it's actually pretty amazing to think that you're not ever gonna have to buy like I said, you know, those packs, packets or those mixes, and you're able to stock up on this a lot cheaper. It's cheaper for me to buy these items in bulk. Yes, it's more of an expense up front. It's gonna cost more for me to buy some of these items in bulk than it is to buy one packet of taco seasoning mix. But when it comes to your health, and then when it comes to the actual cost per meal, it's cheaper than it is buying all of those individual mixes. If you wanna see more of what our pantry looks like and what we stock, then you can go and watch this video here.